Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Anton Warnchuk in Baltimore, and welcome to another edition of The Porter Report. Now joining us is Gareth Porter. Gareth is an historian and investigative journalist on U.S. foreign and military policy. He writes regularly for Interpress Service on U.S. policy towards Iraq and Iran. He's the author of five books, the latest of which is Manufactured Crisis, The Untold Story of the Iran Nuclear Scare. Thanks for joining us, Gareth. Happy to be with you, Anton. So we're two weeks away from a July 20th deadline for the nuclear talks between Iran and the P5 plus one. That's the United States, France, Britain, Russia, and China, plus Germany. Uh, what is being discussed at the talks in Vienna, and what's holding them back right now from reaching a final deal? Well, I can't uh, give you certainly a definitive answer as to what precisely is being discussed at, at the talks, but I can tell you that what the United States uh, delegation is saying publicly in the last several days suggests that the U.S. is still pushing Iran very, very hard uh, publicly on the question of the size of the centrifuge uh, capability or the uh, enrichment capability of Iran, appearing to at least insist that Iran must accept a very significant downsizing of the number of centrifuges uh, in the comprehensive agreement. Now, I'm not so completely convinced that this is the bottom line for the United States. I have a very strong feeling that what's really going on here is that the United States is using this uh, public insistence that Iran must accept a downsizing of the centrifuge, uh, the, the size of its centrifuge uh, collection, uh, as a means of pushing Iran on the longer term question of uh, how many centrifuges Iran could have uh, at a later date. That is, uh, on the grounds that, that Iran would claim uh, that it needs to support uh, the Boucher reactor itself or to support uh, indigenous reactors that might come on uh, on stream later on. Uh, this could happen somewhere between seven and 15 years uh, from today. And the question I think that is really roiling these negotiations perhaps more than anything else at this point is when that second stage or that later stage would take effect the United States is saying that, uh, that after the first stage of this agreement, uh, that, that uh, whether it's 15 or 20 years from now, Iran would be free to do whatever it wants. But it's insisting that that uh, would not take place for quite a long time. And I think it's pretty clear that Iran wants to move that date up uh, to uh, a much closer date, uh, perhaps around 20 uh, 2020, 2021, 22, something like that, um, so that it would be able to have enough centrifuges uh, to have a credible claim that it can support its uh, uh, nuclear power program, which it can't at this point. It has far too few centrifuges. So I, my hunch is that that's what's going on, but um, no, no certainty about that. Okay, and do you think that the U.S.'s need to cooperate with Iran over the crisis in Iraq will affect the outcome of the negotiations? I see no sign thus far that that has any bearing whatsoever on U.S. diplomacy in these talks. Uh, the U.S. has gone out of its way, in fact, to deny that Iraq is being discussed uh, at all on the sidelines, uh, let alone in the negotiations themselves. And indeed, uh, it strikes me as quite credible that they are, in fact, refusing to allow Iraq to enter into these talks. Now, that doesn't mean that they don't want to have any role whatsoever uh, in cooperation with uh, Iran on Iraq. I think they do want to have cooperation in that regard. But I don't think that they're going to allow this to interfere with uh, U.S. pressure on Iran in the talks. And to, to allow that uh, there would be an interest on in the part of the United States uh, to, to intervene would be to weaken, obviously, the, the pressure. And so they're unwilling to do that, so far at least. Now, let me get your response to a recent op-ed by Secretary of State John Kerry that appeared in Washington Post at the end of June. Uh, he wrote, quote, there remains a discrepancy between Iran's professed intent with respect to its nuclear program and the actual content of that program to date. Uh, 
The divide between what Iran says and what it has done underscores why these negotiations are necessary and why the international community united to impose sanctions in the first place. To gain relief from sanctions, the world is simply asking Iran to demonstrate that its nuclear activities are what it claims them to be. What's your response? Well, clearly what uh, Kerry is doing here is alluding to the uh, U.S. demand that Iran must accept uh, something far less than what it now has in terms of enrichment capability. The, the Iranians have 19,000 centrifuges, of which uh, some 10,000 are actually in use or have been in use up to now. And uh, the, the clear implication of this is that the United States uh, does not uh, want to allow Iran to have anything close to 10,000, let alone 19,000, uh, centrifuges. And that has been leaked to the media on more than one occasion. So that, that's what I was alluding to a few moments ago when I said the United States is pressuring Iran to accept this much smaller number. Um, the, the problem that I have with this is twofold. First of all, uh, the, the uh, rationale that has been offered by U.S. officials uh, on and off the record for this demand is that uh, the United States must have must increase the so-called breakout time or timeline, meaning the amount of time that it would take Iran uh, once it made a decision to actually uh, enrich a sufficient amount of weapons grade uranium to be able to build one single atomic bomb. And uh, that, that, as I say, has been the, the rationale for the demand. But in fact, uh, it's not necessary for the United States to demand a deep cut in centrifuge numbers in order to lengthen that timeline, that, that breakout timeline from the present oh, two or three months to six to 12 months. Uh, that can be done in other ways, specifically by reducing the level of the stockpile of already low enriched uranium that Iran has on hand. And uh, the, the Iranians have made it clear uh, already that they are willing to negotiate uh, methods of assuring the United States that it cannot have a breakout capability by uh, not having a stockpile of low enriched uranium. In other words, they're willing to work with the U.S. on a scheme that would uh, be an alternative to reducing the number of centrifuges to a very small pr uh, proportion of the present number. And that appears to be thus far what the United States has resisted. But uh, the logic of the situation is that the United States will compromise on this because they know perfectly well that they can, in fact, achieve what they've claimed they need to achieve without uh, cutting the number of centrifuges so severely. And, we, and in regards to an issue that is formally separate from the nuclear talks, uh, what's the status of the International Atomic Energy Agency's years-long probe into Iran's alleged development of detonators for nuclear weapons? Well, the probe, of course, is on a broader subject, uh, not just the subject of the detonators, uh, which uh, supposedly the IAEA believed could be used or was used for a covert nuclear weapons program, but on the broader subject of a number of activities that the IAEA has uh, in published reports suggested were indicative of possible military dimensions, as they call it, of the Iranian nuclear program. And the present status of it is that Iran and the IAEA reached an agreement back in February uh, that um, there would be a series of steps that Iran would take to cooperate with the IAEA's, and IAEA's investigation uh, over the next few months, um, and that once each any of those uh, issues were resolved through Iranian information and explanation to the satisfaction of the IAEA, the IAEA would then close the file on that issue. Now, what, what has happened instead of that, and, and I wrote about this uh, last month, is that, that Iran did in fact provide uh, information uh, and documentation to the IAEA on this, this question of detonator development, a program of detonator development. The Iranians have always said that they had their own program to develop a detonator uh, uh, detonator program for non-nuclear applications. They've always made that clear. 
the IAEA has demanded that Iran prove, in effect, that it did, in fact, have non-nuclear applications. And apparently, the Iranians provided documentation which pretty much did prove that. Uh, but what then happened, or what didn't happen, was that the IAEA did not close the file and has simply said, well, we'll let you know at some appropriate moment what we think of this. And that uh, seems very clear to me to be a political response by the IAEA uh, to keep the file open for political reasons so that uh, the, the, the Iranians are not given any favorable publicity suggesting that they're cooperating freely uh, and taking the pressure off politically so that uh, the United States can more effectively uh, pressure Iran, as I've talked about just, just before uh, in this interview. Okay, and then briefly, uh, do you expect to see a deal by July 20th? Very difficult to say. I mean, I, I'm, my guess at this point is that it's not going to happen, uh, in part because just uh, four days ago, again, a senior administration official, obviously someone involved directly in the talks because it was uh, uh, a, a briefing that was done in Vienna, uh, again talked about the fact that Iran uh, must make moves that would convince the United States that it is serious about not having aspirations for nuclear weapons. And uh, the, the tenor of that was such that it, it certainly underlined the determination of the United States to push Iran on the number of centrifuges once more. And uh, the, the, the intensity of that uh, convinces me that, that we are in for uh, probably a longer period of negotiations and, and that, that we are not close really to an agreement at this point. Okay, Gareth Porter, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.